Welcome to 30 Second Chances, where we ask deep contemplative questions and provide far too little time to formulate thoughtful, reflective answers. My guest today is composer Jeff Rona. Jeff, how you doing? Daniel, it's good to be here. Okay, you know- oh, and I'm fine. At, yeah. <laughs> You've already messed up. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, you know the drill, 30 seconds on the clock and then on to the next question. Yes. You... I don't have a clock in front of me. Is that going to be a... However, I, I a, do. Have I, have, I have a high-tech timer here. Oh, look at that. See that? It's, it's How does that a... work? Well, you, you flip it over and then after a few seconds, it gives you a little... Oh, look at that. Here. Yes, it's lovely. What will the kids think of next? I'm telling you, it's very, very impressive. And then uh, at the end of the 30 seconds, you will hear a buzz that I hope will go something like this. That's, um, all right, that, Rude. that I hear that. Yes, indeed. Okay, so question number one. Yes. Describe your job to a five-year-old. I write music that goes into the movies, TV shows, and video games that you love to watch and play. I compose the music, I produce the music, I record it, I mix it, and from my room here, it goes to your room there. Are there cookies? On demand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to stall for you for the 30 seconds here. You're, you're too good at this already, you know that, right? Well, you know, one learns, one learns what the, uh, you know, uh, attention span of a five-year-old is. So it's, I, I'd say it's well under 30. Indeed. It, it, it was when I was five. Okay. Next question. <clears throat> Tell me something that sounds ridiculous, but is actually true about yourself. Um, something that's ridiculous, but true about me. Um, I used to lay bricks. That's interesting. Hmm. That sounds very painful for a keyboard player. I'm not a keyboard player. I always thought you were mostly a keyboard player since you always have keyboards in front of you. There's a whole range of flutes from all over the world. I'm a woodwind player. Not that it's any better, but I was gonna um, say it's it's not a whole lot better for your fingers if, now, is it? And um, you know, when I learned to lay bricks, I it was incredibly satisfying because you're down laying bricks. I was making a patio, and um, you look up, and then it's all done. And it, actually, the, the the closest sensation I've had to that is looking up and seeing a page of score paper filled in. It's a tangible result of an intangible effort. I see. Okay, next question. What's the one thing you wish people had told you before you started working in your present job? That the job isn't about what you can do as much as it is about how you go about doing it. That it is as much a uh, mindset and attitude as anything that it's about creating relationships based on understanding and trust, and then using that every day to make actual music. Next question. How has the growth of immersive audio impacted your work and composing? Sure. Um, working in immersive audio both in terms of being in surround, but also being uh, re interactive in real time. Uh, as I've gotten deeper into uh, working on video games, um, having a, a, a solid understanding of it has a deep impact on how you compose and produce and mix music. So um, now that I'm doing more work in the video game world and interactive music world, um, having an understanding of it Next and the capacity for it has been good. <laughs> what would 15-year-old you be most and least impressed with about you today? <clears throat> um, my 15-year-old self would probably wonder about all those women I dated. Uh, <laughs> and um, although I guess I would have already been married and had a kid by then because, oh no, I'm the 15-year-old, so I'm like, 
Yes. Um, so, and in so, fact, yeah, adult you probably wonders about. It would probably have questioned story. many of my choices, <laughs> um, but would also have been proud to see me um, or be impressed by some of the very high profile things I've gotten to do in my life. Next question. What's the one piece of gear you regret selling and why? Um, you know, I regret having sold a fairly substantial Roland System 700, uh, System 100 rather, the, the eighth inch jacks, not the quarter inch jacks, the, the ARP ripoff, not the Moog ripoff. Um, I had a, a very large collection of it that were literally the last modules they ever manufactured. Hans Zimmer and I bought them in bulk and split them up between us. Uh, he still has his, but I got rid of mine. Yes. Hans has a lot more space to put his stuff than you do, no doubt. Um, probably so. Yes. Next question. If you could have one pointless or semi-useless superpower, what would it be? Um, oh, it has to be useless? Well, it could be semi-useless, you know. Well, I'd love to be able to be anywhere without having to go there. I would like to just appear there, but that's a fairly substantial power that comes that comes with quite a bit of, uh, there's some perks to that, you know, uh, both offensive and defensive. Right, beam me up Scotty and all that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Beam me up Scotty, that's, that's the superpower I want. I don't know if that's necessarily. Gonna, I have to stick with it. It, I, you know, the the, the journey is not the destination. <laughs> Always, sometimes, rarely, usually not. Indeed, indeed. Okay, um, that concludes our brief question and answer period. Here, I'm going to give Ooh. you 30 seconds more on the clock and allow you to either shamelessly plug something you're working on. Um, ask me a question or just pontificate on the state of the world or whatever you want. It's 30 seconds. It's all yours. Oh, that's very kind of you. Um, well, I do have a solo album uh, coming out in about two weeks called Vapor. Um, everything else is not till next year, but that's that'll be available everywhere. Um, it's been a pleasure to do this. Uh, how's it been for you, Daniel? <laughs> it's been fabulous. And does anybody ever call you Dan? Um, only a few people here and there who don't know that my name is Daniel, but you know, it's perfectly fine with me. Um, I will respond because to every Dan. Every Dan named Daniel? My, my actual official name is Daniel, yes. 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 But there, there's nobody whose name is Dan, is there? Actually, uh, in fact, there is. And in fact, a good friend of mine is named Dan and spells it with two N's. Well, that's just abusing the privilege. It is, actually. I've always found that to be interesting. Although, you know, I, I, I would write a letter that I would complain. Well, you know, I, I have another close friend whose name is actually Greg as opposed to Gregory. And he spells it with two G's at the end, too. So because mm -hmm. I've never met anybody named Bob whose name was Bob. It's true. And I'm not, like and I know a few Daniels, a few Dans, but they are all technically Daniels. Mm. I don't are know. It sounds like a weird punchline to me. Here? Pardon me? Are, are we going on too much of a tangent here? Uh, we're, we're well down the rabbit hole. Yes, indeed. All right. However, it's been a pleasure and thank you for playing our game. <laughs> <laughs> not to be continued. <laughs> <laughs>